Hey everybody, it's Ardwolf with another unboxing video. This time we have Mark Herman's Churchill Big Three Struggle for Peace by GMT. This is a 2015 release. I want to say this released in mid to late summer. And as of when I'm filming this a few days ago, GMT announced that it is out of stock on their end. So I figured I might as well run it out and grab it. Obviously, it's out of stock from GMT. They say it's going to be uh, sooner rather than later for a reprint, but there's probably still some copies in the distribution pipeline. I, I scored this from a local game store. So it's in one of GMT's big boxes, and as you can hear, there's probably quite a bit of components in here. So high solitaire suitability, really high, their highest rating, and pretty low complexity. I'm not sure I agree with that based on my perusal of the rules. Now, I haven't played this but I did observe a game, and I don't know that I'd consider it quite that low. It's not an incredibly complicated game. And it's also, I'd call it a war game because it simulates the war, um, but it abstracts the war to an enormous degree. So let's crack her open and see what we have. Now, as you can kind of see, I think, I have, of course, looked at the components already since I have uh, observed a live game of this as is traditional for GMT's fat boxes. The vacuum is very tight. Beautiful box, too. I love the cover. Okay, so we have the Big 3 Struggle for Peace Rules of Play. This looks like a 36-page rule book, and rather a lot of it looks like examples of play, so actual rules come to what looks like 22 pages, plus another page of solitaire rules. I find this picture actually really amusing that uh, how short Stalin was. So I've seen this picture before. Um, full color, matte finish on the pages. I prefer the matte finish. I think the semi-gloss actually probably wears a little bit better, uh, but I take pretty anal, anal retentive care of my stuff anyway, so I don't think it's a problem. Now this has like a, there's a, like a profusion of components in this game. So you get stickers. You get uh, stickers for the big three leaders. I'm a little disappointed they didn't give you a block for Truman, actually, because Roosevelt might die in the middle of the game. Uh, and you've got these front blocks for the U.S. And uh, there's some spares on here, too. So let's set that aside. We have one, two, three, four of these player aid cards. I'm not entirely sure why we have four, since it's a three-player game. Uh, but here you have the sequence of play, uh, the victory point schedule, which is relatively complicated in this game. It's probably the most complicated part of the game. And you have bots for Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin on the back. So you can play this with one, two, or three people. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably best with three. But you get I got at least four of these things, so I have an extra one. We've got a counter sheet. Um... Which is this is the the thick GMT uh, brown core stock with um, rounded edges already, so I don't have to clip this. All I can do is put it in a, a tray and be ready to go, which is really nice. Um, beautiful counter sheet, I would say. And you have a board. We'll, we'll take a look at the board in a minute, but it is a mounted map board. Uh, I really like GMT's mounted map boards. Looks like an uh, eight fold in this case now. We also have a whole bunch of other stuff here. We've got some dice. Now, I'm probably going to replace these with my own dice because I'm super anal about that. Um, and then there's a 10-sided dice that you use for a 10-sided die. It really irritates me when somebody refers to a single die as dice. Uh, but you need a pair of dice for uh, each of the three players, plus they give you a 10-sided for various other things. Um, you've got a bag of these little chits, which represent uh, covert networks. I've heard some people complaining about these little bingo chit or tiddlywinks things or whatever these things even are. Um, I'm not sure I have a huge problem with them. We've got a bag of blocks and other stuff. Um, I'm not going to open the bag right now, but you've got like a little meeple in here for various... For, uh, this is for the one of the agenda things on the big board, I believe. More baggies because I need those. I always get those. Ooh, look at this. We have three, four decks of cards here, all wrapped separately. We have a USSR, USSR staff deck, a USA staff deck, and everybody draws their own deck. A conference deck, which is like a general thing, and I, I, as far as I can tell, I think these actually get played in a specific order. So you play the first card first, and then you go through the numbered cards up to the last conference. And then, of course, we have a deck for Churchill. And then we have 
excuse me, one of these inserts, which these are nice. I always take them out um, and usually, honestly, throw them away. Um, but I will keep it in here for the time being. Um, I have been known to kind of cut it up so that it lays flat in the bottom of the box. But I have a pretty picture in the bottom, but I'm, I'll leave it as is for now. So let's put this stuff back for the moment and take a look at the board. A very attractive mounted map board. Game's gorgeous. I presume at this point that Mark Herman has so much clout that he can just say, yes, I would like a mounted board and a big box and, and oh, you can reprint it because I say so. So Mr. Herman has assured us that uh, a reprint on this game will be coming very soon. He has had a very active uh, last few years. I always fold these, unfold these like an idiot for some reason. So I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to see. As is traditional, as I mentioned in my last GMT unboxing video where the game had a mounted map, uh, these will tend to buckle a bit. And I just shook the camera, sorry about that. Uh, the first time you lay them out, set it under some acrylic, uh, put some games on it, and it'll be fine. Um, you can try and bend it back if you're under time pressure. I broke one doing that. I don't recommend it. Um, so on this side, let me sort of fold it up so that you can hopefully see most of it. This is the conference display, the side of the uh, game board where you track what's going on in the various conferences that happen between the big three. And the individual leaders may set out conferences, uh, but they're, they're, like, their aides are there, so you still play with them, you just can't use the actual, say, Roosevelt card or Churchill card or whatever it is at that time, uh, except under certain circumstances. And then on the other side of the board, which I will again try to show you on my pathetic video graphing equipment, you have the military display, and this is where you actually fight the war. And it's just a series of tracks, so I, I guess... Um, in the, if you start at like the, the full campaign game, you would start in the Western Theater, Eastern Theater, Central Pacific, China, Burma, India, Far East, South Pacific, and Mediterranean. Uh, but the, the scenario I saw, um, you, uh, Western Theater started in the Bolero box. I want to say uh, Eastern Theater started in Belarus, uh, and these other ones were uh, a little bit advanced as well. And you, your objective in the war part, and you have to cooperate in doing this, is to conquer Germany and Japan, or get Germany and Japan to surrender. Um, you might not be able to do that, and in fact, local anecdotal evidence suggests that you do kind of have to work together to do that, and that's something that the players will have to accustom themselves to. Um, it's a, a single player wins, but uh, the victory conditions are very unusual. I'm not even going to try to explain it right now, because I don't uh, have a complete grasp on it. Um, but the guy with the most victory points, the person, I should say, with the most victory points at the end isn't necessarily the winner, depending on the, the, uh, the, the way things shake out. So it's a very interesting victory system. I really look forward to playing this. I kind of hope to play this this weekend. We'll see if that actually happens. In the meantime, uh, Churchill, Big Three Struggle for Peace. I'm glad I managed to score a copy of this and didn't have to wait for the reprint. Um, I have... Like I said, observed a, a, a session of this game in play, and it's it looks awesome, and it's right up my personal alley. Uh, it's kind of a soft game. I'd call it a war game, but uh, I have a looser definition than some folks. So, Big Three Struggle for Peace. It's possible you'll see another video on this particular game from me. We'll see if that happens. I, I don't want to... Don't want to overpromise and underdeliver once again. So, uh, Big Tree Struggle for Peace, Churchill, great looking game. Uh, we can't wait to get this thing on a table. Thanks for watching.